Master Hamster, Super Science, Mold. What's furry green and taking over Marcy's lunch? Find out when Master Hamster demystifies mold. Then put on your sciencing hat and learn how to run your own experiment. Master Hamster Super Science presents It Came from the Lunchbox. PB and J, for sure. <sighs> nah, looks more like tuna to me. It's my lunchbox, and I hate tuna. PB and J. Hey, children. I have spent the better part of two days working to maximize the yum yum carrying capacity of my bolocopter. And guess what? We're out of yum yums. What are you two even doing? Staring at a moldy peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Tuna. Um, that's something you kids do a lot? We found it in my lunchbox. It's been under my bed all summer. We're bored. It's too hot to go outside. I hear you. I'd suggest my Freeze Ray 7000, but it only works when it's already freezing outside. I gotta fix that. Okay, let me see this thing. I'll use my super magnifying monocle to heighten my already superior powers of observation. Yowza! Great gobsmackers, what is that? Tuna. PB and J. Sure, it could be a moldy sandwich, but let me pose the question. Could it be the beginning of an invasion of zombie sandwiches? Or a handsome hamster genius could have accidentally turned Cat Ninja into a fuzzy glob. You, you didn't. didn't! No, but I can dream. By my calculation, this sandwich is obviously extraterrestrial in origin. Mr. Squeaks, are you trying to say this moldy lunch is an alien? Okay. There's maybe a 2% chance it's a zombie sandwich. So, I gotta do a thing. Wait, 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 wait! I can prove it! I am a scientist. I don't just make up wild theories. I follow the proven process of scientific investigation. Behold! You wrote on the back of the window shade. Mom's gonna freak out. Tell her Leon did it. Hey! No time to argue. We have sciencing to do. Sciencing isn't a word, and I'm pretty sure his scientific investigation is whack. He got it half right. Let's just humor him. He's not going to let it go, so we might as well play along. What else are we going to do? It's not like it'll hurt anything. What are you doing? I got bored, so I fired up the laser. We learned about scientific investigation in school, and giant lasers aren't part of it. Oh, yeah? Then why is my lab full of them? No giant lasers, Mr. Squeaks. But what if it grows bigger? What if it makes more mold monsters? Today, a lunchbox. Tomorrow, the world. <laughs> my airborne mold spores will spread mold monsters everywhere. Pew, pew, pew. How about a compromise? Why don't we do a real scientific investigation on this moldy sandwich, or er, alien monster? Go on. We could test it for a weakness without lasers. First, we'll observe the phenomenon. 
I'm observing that this sandwich grew all this mold while it was sitting in my lunchbox under my bed all summer. Now we ask a question like, where is the mold monster's hidden base? Hey, a yum yum. Or we could ask a question about what we observed. My question is, will temperature affect mold's growth? The mold was growing under the bed, inside the lunchbox. So my explanation is that mold grows well in a warm, dark place. Then, maybe if we put it in a cold place, it won't grow as well. <laughs> Let's plan a test. We can find out if cold temperatures stop mold from growing. Fine. If I can't have a laser, I suppose I'll settle for a freeze ray. Um, maybe we start with a plain old freezer. Did I mention we're out of yum-yums? According to my science notes, we need to make sure that all the variables are the same, except the one we're testing. So we put one half in the freezer and one half in the closet. Light conditions are the same, and the sandwich halves are bagged the same way to keep in moisture. Dark and moist, but so cold. Brrr. The variable is the temperature. Dark and moist, but warm enough. I could get used to this. Now we investigate. We can chart the growth of the mold every day and compare. Sporangia spores is my new favorite word. They create spores, and spores are everywhere. Sure, that's how they control your mind. No, it's how they create other fungi. They're like seeds. Seeds of evil? Okay, so when do I get to use my freeze ray? Slow down. We don't even know how cold affects it yet. We'll wait and see how fast the mold grows in the cold versus at room temperature. That's what you call science? Patiently waiting to analyze the evidence? No lasers? No mutants? No fun? In the meantime, let's do a different test. Will we feel cooler sitting around the apartment or playing in the sprinklers outside? Fine, go have fun getting soaked. Sheesh, kids. Maybe it was just a moldy sandwich after all. Whatever. I think I'll order some yum-yums on Hamster Prime. Wait, wait, wait! The sciencing isn't done! Turn the page to learn how you can run your own super science experiment. Sciencing with Master Hamster. Can you put the freeze on mold? Blurg. What we'll ask. Would freezing temperatures actually stop a mold monster or even just a moldy sandwich? What we'll do... Perform a scientific test to see if mold grows at temperatures below freezing. Got that? First, we'll need two sealable plastic bags, a teaspoon, water, a marker, ugh, and bread. The kind without preservatives works best. Next, you need mold spores. What are you doing? Hush, child. I'm sciencing. Mold spores are everywhere, so just rub the bread on a doorknob, a table, anything people touch a lot. I feel silly. Next, tear the bread into two pieces. Carefully place each piece in a bag. Add a teaspoon of water into each bag with the bread. Use a measuring spoon to put equal amounts in each bag. Use a marker to label one bag freezing and the other room temperature. I got this. You put the room temperature bag in a dark place, like a closet, and the freezing bag in the freezer. I was going to say zap it with a freeze ray, but you do you. This way, 
we're testing one variable, temperature, while keeping other variables like light and moisture the same. Um, did someone rub bread all over the doorknob? Leave the bread alone for a few days and let those mold spores do their thing. Then check the bags every few days. Write down or draw pictures of any changes you observe. Which bread grew the most mold? You should have your answer in about 10 days. When the experiment is over, throw away the bags without opening them. Because, gross. Repeat the experiment with other variables. Light versus dark, wet versus dry, subatomic radiation, a shrink ray, or maybe a dimensional wormhole. Blurg. The End Hi. Did I hear you mention mold? Well, I am something of a mold expert. Fury Roaches Fungi Facts Wow. Reading about fungi sure has made me hungry. I mean, mold is like ketchup to me. It's all over some of my tastiest meals. But fungi can do more than turn a good garbage can feast into a great one. Here are some super cool fungi facts brought to you by a fun guy. The fungus is among us. Where you go, fungi follow. In the soil, in the water, in the air, and even inside your body. That's right. There's fungi living in your intestines right now, helping digest what you've eaten. Kind of awkward if you've eaten other fungi. That fungus is humongous. Whales, dinos, and even Master Hamster's ego are puny compared to the largest organism on Earth, a forest fungus in Oregon. It's as big as 1,665 football fields, lives mostly underground, and is still growing. Huh. Sounds kind of like a supervillain. Fungi are friendly. Mycorrhizal fungi grow in tree roots and connect whole networks of trees, sort of like how the Internet connects people. And when trees log on, they can trade everything from water to nutrients to information with the plants and fungi in their network. Become a flavor scientist. Master Hamster isn't the only mad scientist, or inventor, experimenting with new ideas. Flavor scientists, also called flavor chemists or flavorists, design new tastes and copy old favorites all the time. You can thank them for some of your favorite flavorful foods, drinks, toothpastes, and more. Flavor scientists know a lot about chemistry and biology, are creative, and have keen senses of smell, taste, and adventure. Creating new flavors means trying new things all the time, in taste test kitchens and labs, not layers. Orange, lemon, and purple? You can probably spot grape-flavored candy by its color, but does purple really taste like grape? Some of our favorite flavors were literally inventions. Want some diacetyl or acetoin on your popcorn? More than 1,000 natural and artificial flavor chemicals are added to our foods, giving us sweet flavors like banana. Mmm, isoamyl acetate. Savory ones like butter, and pretty much everything in between. Smell is a flavor superhero. Our sense of smell is responsible for about 80% of what we can taste. Without it, yum-yums wouldn't taste nearly as yummy. That's why, to do their jobs, flavor scientists have to be able to identify hundreds of different chemicals by smell alone. <laughs>